find ourselves at the beginning of the Triovion, and I know that we've got a late, a late Pascha, a late Lent this year, uh, but we're getting ready, right? We're getting started here. Um, today uh, is the Sunday of the Publican and the Pharisee, and it's a uh, it's a sobering um, it's a sobering cautionary tale uh, on how not to pray, but also an encouraging and uplifting one on how to pray and the kind of the consolation and the, the redemption, the, the reconciliation that's possible when we pray uh, truly. Um, how do we pray, right? Christ gave us the Lord's Prayer, right? He told us, this is how you pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We all know how the rest goes, right? So he gave us those words precisely to say. But also he gave us this parable in another way to show us a simplified version how to pray, and, and most importantly, the, the atmosphere in which we are to pray, right? He gave us a parable of the, this example, this, this kind of hypothetical scenario, where there were two people. There was a Pharisee, a, a lawyer, a priest, someone who was expert in all things on the faith, right? Who stood up with himself, right? Stathis pro seafton. He stood before himself, right? He didn't stand before God. He stood with himself in the center of the temple in his dazzling raiments and his amazing garments. And he spoke these eloquent, lofty words. Does that look like anyone here? It looks like me, right? So take everything that I say with a grain of salt because I am the bad example, all right? The good example was the publican who stood in the far back. Good job, guys. All of you back there. John Bergie, way to go. In the back row. The back row. And he didn't dare to lift up his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy me a sinner. While the Pharisee was saying, thank you, God. Thank you for all of these things. Thank you for all the blessings that you have given to me. Thank you for making me different from everyone else. Thank you for making me not like that person, or certainly not that person over there. God forbid that person back there. Thank you for making me, me. And the other one, who is a known sinner, acknowledged his sinfulness, and didn't even dare approach the center of the church, but rather put his, his, his gaze inwardly. He had an introspective look and said, I'm a sinner, I'm broken, heal me. God, heal me. You are the one who can do it. There's no one else who can do it but you. That's the way to pray. Is there a prayer that the Orthodox Church has that's like that second prayer? Of course there is. It's called the Jesus Prayer. So God gave us verbatim the Lord's Prayer on how to pray. But if we find ourselves in times where we can't pray collectively to our Father because maybe I have something, there's a, there's a grudge between me and Barbara, and I, I can't, you don't even know, you, you and I, we're on thin ice, guys, all right? But if there was a grudge here, and I couldn't find myself to be corporate with her, in a communal state to pray our Father, right? Because it's first person plural. If you're, gonna, if you're gonna pray to the Father, the Lord's Prayer, typically that's something you do together, right? In, a, in an assembly. So if you find yourself by yourself or at odds with someone and not able to pray to our Father, what's the way to fix that? What's the way to stem the tide until you get back to communion? Either because it's, you know, you're waiting for the next service or you're waiting to reconcile with the person that's got issues, right? That you have issues with. You pray the Jesus prayer, which is God have mercy on me, the sinner. Once I do that, guess what? My beef with Barbara, that's kind of gone by the wayside because I've acknowledged that I am the greatest of sinners. Well, if I'm the greatest of sinners, then how can I be harsh on someone else who I think has wronged me, right? I'm the greatest sinner. So whatever she's done pales in comparison to what I've done. That's the approach that we need to have. So the, the Jesus prayer is the preliminary prayer, the, the prerequisite to get back to the Lord's prayer. It is the clean the slate prayer. So now I can pray to our Father who art in heaven together with all of my brothers and sisters and fellow children of our Father. One of the things that we saw here, so there's how we pray, right? So this, this parable is showing us how to pray. So... We don't boast, we don't stand and shine the light on us, right? We, we look at our own sinfulness, our own brokenness. We very introspectively kind of do this in private. 
One of the things that both these people did, the Pharisee and and the publican, both stood. It said the Pharisee stood thus with himself, and the publican stood in the back and didn't lift his eyes up to heaven. The typical state to when we pray is we stand while we pray, right? We we are facing God with our our arms out like this. Many icons of the Platitera show the Virgin Mary standing like this with her arms out, the Udan's position, right? That's typically how you do it. But it's not important on the manner in which you're standing because the Greek word for stand back there is istimi, istimi, right? And so it's safis or estos in this, but the, the root word is istimi. Istimi means to stand, sure, but it specifically means to stand still, to stand firm, to stand at the ready, and to stand steadfast. When we pray, we're not supposed to be distracted moving around. We're not praying as we go. We're not praying as we, you know, are writing that last response to our emails, right? We're not praying as we're making our coffee. We can do that. That's fine. We can pray while we're doing those things. But when we stand in the presence of God to offer a prayer to him, we have to be standing firm with our whole beings, unmoving, unwaveringly, ready to offer ourselves to him. The other thing that we see here is that the Pharisee was standing firm, standing pat, standing steadfast with himself. He was not going to change this. He was going to be proud of himself. He wasn't going to waver off of that. He was unrelentingly prideful, unrelentingly boastful, unrelentingly feeling superior to the people out there behind him. He was, woe to you, Pharisee. You don't even see your error. You're standing firm on that path, on that, on that, that stance. Whereas the publican, no matter what successes he felt like he had in life, which he thought probably were few, he was standing firm in the, in the idea that he was a sinner and that was, he was in need of God's mercy. Stand firm there. Stand fe- steadfast there. He beat his breast. That's the other thing, right? He had great, compa- he had great compassion, great, um, great contrition, great repentance, great penitence right here. One of the things that we heard in the hymns today was uh, confirm in us such sighs as these, right? We're asking the Holy Spirit to confirm in us such sighs as the publican. And we just heard right here in the Kondakion, right? Let us flee the Pharisees' exalted parlance. Let us learn the publican's humble demeanor. With sighs unto the Savior cry out and say. With sighs. What does sighs mean? Well, that word in Greek is stenagmis. Stenagmis, Right? which means sighs or groaning under intense pressure, with groanings under intense pressure. Who in the parable was experiencing such pressure? The Pharisee? No. He was praising God that he didn't have any pressures. He was praising God, thank you for taking all these pressures from me. I've been able to fast twice every, you know, from, since Saturday. I've been able to give tithes of everything I give because you've given me so much. He was blessed beyond belief. And he started thinking that that was something due to his righteousness, that he was deserving of those gifts. Meanwhile, the person who was in the back, the publican, was putting pressure. What? Was God putting pressure on him? No, he was putting pressure on himself by hitting his own chest. He was saying, I, I'm the publican. Guess what? He was rich too. All the publicans were rich because they stole from people. But he knew that. And so he said, you know what? What I've been doing is wrong. I'm going to put the pressure on myself. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Guess what? Does God put pressure on us? No, he relieves the pressure from us. He takes these burdens off of us. He divests us of these burdens. So when we put this pressure on ourselves, when we sigh voluntarily, when we voluntarily groan underneath our own sinfulness and acknowledge our brokenness, he fixes it. In Romans chapter 8, verse 26, there's only two places in the, in the whole New Testament where stenagmis is, is written. Number one was Acts. Everyone who was with us for Bible study, we made it, right? 28 chapters, we made it, right? So one of them was in Acts, right? We talked about St. Paul's pressures that he was feeling. But the second time was when Paul was writing the Romans. In chapter 8, verse 26, actually, if the Whitleys are here, are the Whitleys here? Yeah, you're going to like this because you made me read this one day at Bible study. <laughs> Acts chapter 8, 26, you could probably say it with me. The Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses, for we do not know how to pray 
We do not know how to pray, as we should, but the Spirit intercedes for us with our groanings too deep for words. Today, in the Triodion, we begin the Triodion, today we are focusing on prayer. Lent is going to do us no good if we don't know how to pray. Today is trying to make sure that we know how to pray. St. Paul said he didn't know how to pray. So that's why I'm going to here teach you. Because I know. Are you kidding me? That's, that's crazy to think that I know how to do something that St. Paul didn't know how to do. St. Paul doesn't know how to pray. He says we all need the Holy Spirit's help. But if we take on this spirit of groaning, this spirit of sighing, this introspective view of our brokenness, the Holy Spirit will take care of the rest. He'll do the rest for us. Isn't that amazing? You don't have to be some lofty theologian. You don't have to be a priest to know how to pray. We've been given the tools right here. Namely, by our talents, our vocal cords, our hearts for sure, but also by our very births and baptisms and chrismations. We've been equipped with the grace of the Holy Spirit. For those of you who don't have a prayer rope, go get one. Because this is another resource. You can get one that's like 100 knots right here. You get one that's 33 knots, you can get 50s. You can get, I'm sure that there are bigger ones or smaller ones. Get a prayer rope and teach yourself. Get in the habit of saying the Jesus prayer. This helps you keep track of it. Give yourself a goal. Say, I'm going to do 33 knots. I'm going to do, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy in me, a sinner. I'm going to do that 33 times for Lent. That's, that's easy. You could do that, right? If you want to challenge yourself, do 100. If you want to challenge yourself, do 103 times a day. Wh whatever you want, whatever you're able to do. Put some pressure on yourself voluntarily because if you do that, you'll find restoration. You'll find relief from that. And you'll find a crown that's been given to you from heaven in that moment. Okay? For those of you who have never done the Jesus Prayer, let's go over it very simply, very quickly. The idea is, it's very short. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Or you could just do, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. That's it, right? If you do that in Greek, it actually rhymes, right? So it's nice and easy and, and very reduced in Greek. But if you want to do it in English and you want to add some words, that's fine, right? Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. You're supposed to, if you can get really advanced, link it with your breathing. So you inhale on Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner, right? Okay? And as you do that, you keep track of what you're doing. You keep yourself focused, right? If you're doing this, if you're thumbing each knot each time you do this, chances are you're not using your fingers to scroll, you know, on your phone. You're not, you're not, doing, you're not doing other things. This helps you keep your mind, your soul, and your body focused at the moment of the prayer. So let's all, right here, real quickly, try and center ourselves. Let's practice it together, okay? And remember... I'm the Pharisee, so listen to me, but don't do what I'm doing, okay? This is me being sinful right now, because I'm, I'm showing you how to pray, all right? But let's, I mean, it's what I've got to do. So let's all center ourselves, get good posture, open your airways, open your lungs, all right? So everyone sit up straight, right? Right? Take a couple of, like, calming, settling breaths. Be settled. Be in the moment where you understand that you are with Christ. For some people, it might mean closing your eyes, but we uh, happen to be here in the church where you've got godly inspiration all around you. All right? So focus on something that helps you feel like you're in the presence of God. Maybe it's an icon. Maybe it is closing your, your eyes, right, like the, fair, like the, the publican did. And we're going to together take a deep breath in and out. And on the next one, we're going to add the prayer. So deep breath in. And out. Ready? Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. One more. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner. Look at you. We now have reenacted the publican and the Pharisee today. You've experienced that. When you do that, you feel the burdens coming off of you. You feel the pressures of life being taken away from you. 
you feel your sins being lifted from you. Run to this. Run to this and then stand with it. What did we say stand means? East of me, what did we say stand means? It doesn't just stand, it doesn't lay down. It's not about your orientation. It's about your steadfastness and staying in that position. Run to this prayer and stand in that prayer. That's when you'll know God. And that's what's going to make this Lent be the best Lent of your life. God bless you guys. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, the sinner.